So if you want, if you want money, for instance, you don't pursue money. You pursue value. The focus of a business would determine how successful the business is over time. Success is intentional and greatness is more intentional. Every business is in the business of solving problems. Invest in corporate governance. Systems of reward, systems of learning, of management, systems of accountability. Your vision is foresight based on insight with the benefit of hindsight. Not all passions are to be pursued immediately. That the dog has four legs doesn't mean it has to run in four directions. What does distinctive impact look like? What does greatness look like? How do you define greatness? The dream you don't define cannot drive you. Hello, Africa. You're welcome to another episode of See You Unscripted on Mr. Jeg's Africa. With me today is somebody that needs a very little introduction in the impact space. He has helped small businesses across the world. He's on the board of many organizations. He's been the CEO of Hope Foundation, Leap Africa, Trace Academia. Now, he's on to some things that he would like to reveal himself. Everybody, please welcome the Femi Taiwo. Hello, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Jags Africa. I'm thank excited you. to be here and I'm looking forward to a wonderful conversation. Thank you very much for coming here. I'm particularly excited about this interview. So, what formed Femi Taiwo? All right, so what formed Femi Taiwo? I think um, I'm a combination of passion, mm. vision, values, those three things. Um, I think a major part of my journey started with me understanding more about what I was passionate about, the problems I wanted to solve, the change I wanted to make in the world, a vision of how I saw myself in the world, making a change and contributing to change and the values that could get me there. Mm. So um, I think a good point to start would probably be um, a time when I set out a mission for myself. So people mm. call me FT. And mm. yes, FT is Femi Taiwo, like yes. my initials, but FT has a deeper meaning to me. Mm. FT means facilitating transformation, yeah. right? I remember after volunteering and doing many things with several organizations and reading a bit about the world and reading about, reading biographies and reading different things, I decided or I realized that my positioning was to help facilitate the transformation of individuals, mm. of organizations and nations. So I said that as my mission statement. I got, um, did vision boards out of that, did logos, flyers around that. Wow. And that identity, that I am a transformer or I facilitate the transformation of individuals, of mm. ideas, of organizations and of nations formed the way I related with the world and the way I showed up. And it formed uh, the pace of my preparation, the pace of my execution, the pace of my association, mm. you know, and all of the things I've done. Then around that time as well, I decided that um, I needed my core values mm. to align with that aspiration or with that vision. And so I, um, with the help of one of my very close friends, which who I'm going to review very soon, okay. um, I, I set out to define this set of values. And mm. the values was actually called FEM. Right? So people say I like I acronyms. F A M E. Yeah, so you're yeah, going yeah, yeah, to hear a lot of acronyms. Right? I'm telling you. And I realized that, like many things in life, People mm. pursue the wrong things. Mm. Many times, pursue. If you if you want success, if you want if you want money, for instance, mm. you don't pursue money. Mm. You pursue value or or significance, mm. and money then Comes. naturally just True. follows, right? Um, the focus of a business would determine how successful the business is over time, mm. right? So if a, if a business, for instance, is focused on value creation, customer satisfaction, you know, wowing the customer, you know, um, on the fundamentals, on the unit economics, they can look away and the business will grow, the business will move, right? Um, so I decided that I could focus on some other things and every other thing would actually um, pursue me, right? I could focus on the right things and then my aspirations would naturally form and yes. you know show up right so for me it fame means the f means faithful faithfulness to the call and the color so mm. faithfulness mm. um a is attitude of stewardship mm. right so i'm a steward of my gifts my talents my time my mm. team mm. you know my the organizations i'm privileged to serve in or lead um the m is i'm motivated by love i'm motivated by the love of the the problem I'm trying to solve, mm. the love of the people that are solving the problem with me, mm. the love of humanity, mm. so motivated by love, um, and ease, I strive to execute with excellence and expertise. So mm. there's no point just executing anyhow. You know, there's mediocrity is common, but mm. can I strive to execute with excellence 
you know and with expertise Amazing. right so that's 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 basically what formed me my values my vision and my passion who were your if what were your influences you know mm. what influenced you growing up to say i want to aspire to be this you know some things must have triggered this you know you going on the journey to say i need to have my core values i need to have this what were the things that influenced you very typically in nigeria we you have a long break after grade nine before you yeah. go to senior high school yeah right um and so i had like i think five to six months mm. and then my dad um told me that i had to read books and write book reports wow. so he gave me books like the power of positive thinking um i think that was Norman Vincent Pale. He gave me books by Robert Kiyosaki. He gave me biographies. There was a particular book called Movers and Shakers, mm. which was a summary of several biographies and the greatest thinkers, business mm. thinkers in the world. Um, one thing happened. I, I wanted to have fun, but I had to read these books. I skipped a lot of some of those. I'm smart enough, so I can just read the, the back, read the front, write a book report without yeah. reading the book. So I skipped some books, but in the midst of it, I fell in love with some books, mm. right? I particularly fell in love with biographies. I loved um, the book Movers and Shakers nice. um, because it was an expose of several business thinkers and doers, right? And in that book, I just, I saw people build and do great things, mm. no matter their background, no matter how they started. You know, I... I had a, I, I saw the backstory of some of the biggest brands in the world, you know, and I saw the the the, the story and the trajectory of some of the thinkers whose ideas are shaping the world of business, you know, yes. Peter Drucker, you know, and, and all of those people, um, 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 Michael Porter. I hope I got that right. Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Porter. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, and um, and I and I just decided that so those were the things I was interacting with. Mm that really helped me to shape that you know what i can aspire for much nine. more yeah i can aspire for a lot more i can aspire for that w what's what's my life about going to be about how do i want to contribute i don't just want to come through life and go so that was my first um i would say taste of these things um so the next thing was we we went to we got to sc school back to secondary school and of course you were feeling slum books you know mm -hmm. like all those scrapbooks that we feel yeah, yeah. and everybody had to write what would you want to do in future right i remember then I kind of, be, I, I, because of those books, I had a sense that I wanted to be a leader and an entrepreneur, right? So I, I wasn't so clear about, but I just knew that I wanted to, I wanted to be part of changing the world and frame and shaping the world. Mm. But in my myopic mind, I thought that the major thing to change the world with was money, right? So I knew ultimately that entrepreneurship was one of the sustainable ways to build wealth. Mm. But I, in Nigeria then, oil and gas was raining. Yeah. So I was like, okay. Maybe I should start a career in oil and gas and then use that to raise money and then I can move into business. Yeah. So in all the slum books, I was always feeling chemical engineer, chemical engineer. And that went on from, um, from the slum books to the jam forms and, you know, even my SAT. After I did my SAT and I had to apply to schools in the US, yeah. that I was writing chemical engineering. But I was, I was clueless, you know, to say, what do I really want to do? It was when I got to university, my first few weeks in university, where... I had the much needed career counseling that my school did not, my secondary school did not provide for me. So, I, I mean, we went to the same university. So, you know, yeah. our university, in, at least in my own time, my set, they, they started by teaching us about purpose in the first few weeks. Yes. You know, telling you to think about your purpose, your passion. You know, and I was asking myself, why did I actually choose chemical engineering? And also, I set that first year to probe further. Because you have to interrogate your passion. Yeah. You have to interrogate the ideas that won't leave you alone. You have to interrogate the frustrations you have. So I was interrogating a bit more about myself. Mm. Um, and that journey has not stopped. In fact, right now I'm on a sabbatical and mm. I'm also interrogating my place in the world moving forward. Mm. I mean, despite all the things I've, I've been privileged to do and participate in, I'm asking myself, what does tomorrow hold for me? So that's been the journey for me. It's been a journey of learning, a journey of reflecting, um, but a major part of my life and my identity and my ideologies have been framed by books and reading. Mm. So from my dad's right. time to all the other times. If you were to advise a government now, right, uh, or an education board in Africa, what would you say, how would you say they should infuse career counseling into uh, a secondary schools, high schools? Yeah. How would you, in, in like, a few seconds like how will you tell them to infuse this into the curriculum how will you bring it to bring it in okay um very good question actually mm. a a bit of context to jump into that to to jump into the answer would mm. be we have to recognize that 
everyone is designed uniquely, mm. right? We are, we are, we are, we are, we all encompass visions, passion, talents, giftings. In the in the development world, what we call it is agency. Yes. That young people have agency. Yeah. They have their why, their what, yeah. you know, their how, their yes. identity. You don't, if you want to really unlock the potential of young people, you want to help them to discover themselves. Yeah. You want to help them to discover the agency that they have. So the question is, how do you do that? Yeah. You have to create a sandbox. What is a sandbox? I mean, sandbox is in tech. We talk about sandbox is a place where you can play, test ideas. Yes. So school should be designed in a way that young people can interact with their identity and exercise their identity in different ways. So let me give an example. A good design of a secondary school, since we started with high school, a good design of a high school should be one that you can explore different um, career areas even while you are still in school. Yes. You can interact with them in different ways. So it could be the mix of excursion, internships, apprenticeships, um, field trips, um, volunteering opportunities, the intentional labs created on campus. But you basically have to help them to interact with the potential pathways mm -hmm. and find themselves. It could be as inviting people from outside, career people to come and speak about their careers, business people to come and speak about their jobs. But young people need to be exposed to the possibilities mm. before they pinpoint themselves within those possibilities and say, this is a pathway for my life, mm. right? In terms of career. Yeah. But that is missing. We think it's just about the um, instructional method of a lecturer sits in class, everybody think we, we don't really have that design in part of school programming and pedagogy in a sustainable way, at least in public secondary school. Yeah. But that's one of the ways we can do it. So inviting yeah. people who have gone ahead to come to the secondary schools. And giving them the opportunity to exercise themselves. Yes. So let there be competitions. Competition is a powerful pedagogy. Mm. You know, so there, I mean, a, a good way is look at the US educational system over yes. the years. By the time someone is in high school, they are, they, it's very clear whether they want to pursue athlete, an athletic career yes. or they want to, like, they have opportunities to, ex, to find themselves yeah, and express yeah, themselves yeah. and even test several passions and test several yes. talents. And then, you know what, discover that this is just an interest, but it's not a passion, right? So those kind of opportunities to play and discover and develop before they go out to start deploying themselves are very important. That's, that's very beautiful. Thank you very much for that. So, right now you said you're on a sabbatical uh, we're still going to go into a lot of entrepreneurship questions because you've worked with a lot of small and medium scale businesses and even larger organizations you've headed la large organizations so you now i know you have your uh your uh was your vision board right and you have your statement of um, your mission statement and vision statement if you could sum it up into one what will you say? What will you say drives you right now? Ah, just one. That's top a, of mind. This guy is asking deep questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. You know, to be very honest, um, um, SJ, Mr. Jex Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call him SJ. Yeah. Um, to be very honest, I think I think that articulating it properly is one of the things I'm even trying to. Mm. I can answer that question, but. I would even want to even articulate it better, which is one of the things where my, the season of reflection I'm in right now. But a major thing driving me, um, a major thing driving me is um, if you ask this question maybe a few years ago, I would have said it's about helping young people fulfill their potential and helping them to ensure their society lives up to the reality of their aspirations and dreams. Uh, please, I'll, please break yeah. that down. Well, so I, I'm not happy with where Africa is. Mm. I'm not happy where my nation is. Like, I don't know. I know people are hungry. People are frustrated. But I have this special hunger, I think, mm. which is one of the things that, have, that, that has driven a lot of my career decisions, mm. right? Um, you know, to go and maybe start up on behalf of, of my alma mater, you know, to pursue a career in development. Um, that frustration and anger has driven me to solve problems, to be part of solving problems and shaping um, solutions, you know, towards what I, what, I, what I think. And a big part of that is making a bet on young people, 
helping young people to develop as leaders and as entrepreneurial leaders to solve problems in their community and help their community to become or their society or their country and continent to become um, the best that it can be for them right so a lot of the interventions about that's that's been the last i would say 10 years or 12 years of my life mm. right um in the next couple of years i want to approach that same problem in a different way right which is what i'm trying to interrogate of myself and of what is going on in the world i want to approach that in a different way but in the next phase of my life my faith would come is coming to the fore even more mm. in the sense that i know this is ceo unscripted but the reality is that i want to help people build world-class enterprises still mm. i want to help people build world-class um non-profits that would solve problems you know the wicked problems in the world but after all is said and done what happens after so in the last one year i was privileged to be part of the praxis fellowship mm. and it's the praxis fellowship taught about redemptive entrepreneurship you know faith driven entrepreneurship redemptive yes. entrepreneurship and i think more and more um i don't just want to support change makers generally more and more i i want to help develop redemptive entrepreneurs people that who will take the, the 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 character of christ you know and the attitude of christ and all of those and the wisdom of christ together with the wisdom of the world you know of business school and use it to solve problems that will change the world but also have kingdom significance so more and more that's that's those are the reflections in my mind um mm -hmm. But like that's, I said, I'm on like, that journey. That's what is driving you right yeah. now. Yeah. You're at summit of. Thank yeah. you very much for that. So, in your view, small, medium scale businesses in Africa, we know the peculiarity of Africa, right? You've been in, I know you've traveled all around the world, you know, but, and it even exacerbates, you know, the peculiarity in Africa. So, what are the, what would you say are the basic principles or first principles to scale your business? <laughs> that's, that's, a very, that's a very interesting question. Yeah. Um, first principles. Yeah. Hmm. Growing, scaling your business. First is that business is all about solving problems. Yeah. Every business is in the business of solving problems. Now, whether in the creative sector, agricultural sector, digital sector, whatever sector you play in, whatever industry you, are, you have, you are in the business of solving problems. If you can articulate distinctively the problem you are solving and your uniqueness to solve that problem well compared to others and who you are solving that problem for. So it's, I think it revolves around the value you create. That's the problem you solve. Mm. So, because your products will be solving a problem, your services will be solving a problem. You can we can talk about the other things, but first of all, fundamentally, what's your business? What what value are you bringing to the marketplace? Because it's a game of value, and by that, what problem are you solving? Can you quantify it? Can you qualify it? Can you identify those who have those problems? You know, then we can follow the story of the problem. Who has the problem? Are there many people that have the problem? Are they willing to pay for the problem? Mm. Right? Who are the other people solving the problem? Right, and how do you stand out and be the go-to person when they, when they think about that solution? I think that's fundamental. The the problem you're solving, the value you're creating, and the customers. Amazing. Yeah. So um, those are the, those are more like the basic principles they teach you in business school. You know, uh, what is the value you're bringing to the table? A product, a service. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who are the people that need it? Are they willing to pay for it? Does it solve the problem? Yeah. Um, can you deliver the solution and is it sustainable so those are like the basic principles thank you very much for sharing that thank you. so i'm going back to what are the top three books ah. that changed <laughs> your life ha ah. top three you will know them because you're like hey i know you mentioned uh, some books growing up that your dad gave you you know and to to review but you've read more books since then so top three books that change your mind okay that's one would be good to great i knew that was coming yeah jim collins i, <laughs> I love i bought i bought a carton of that book yeah I, I i when i was leading in leap africa 
we used to theme have themed themes for our years yeah. and for like two years we had good to great as wow. the theme for the year and i bought a whole cut of for I'll, my I'll team members that. no there are two versions of the book there is yeah. the big one that he wrote for the first one he wrote which was focused on for profit businesses and he realized that jim collins realized that a third more than a third of his readers were from the social sector so he wrote another version called um good to great for the social sector right so it was that copy it's a smaller version in fact he has not released the main book he released that as a it was a monograph so like you know what i'm already doing this research and i'm finding a lot of interesting things yeah, this is my first output out there, but yeah. i'm going to do it for further research and then publish a, a bigger book so i bought i bought <laughs> i think one of the afghatons actually what? because yeah <laughs> and i keep giving out those copies i even want to buy right now because i still thought about it some weeks ago so that's the first good to is great it the, the social one the social the sector one i have both but the social sector one particularly okay. um was it's more it's powerful it's beyond even applicable to social sector the principle would applies even to the business sector and even public okay. sector so so if you yeah. if you buy the one for the social sector do yeah. you still need the one for the for profit oh yeah because um the the stories the applications are s quite different okay. but the principles are the same it's the same five principles I of see. the good to great that you applied same framework right but the application is somewhat different, different so yeah okay. you'll benefit from both so good to that's great. one good to great um Ah, I grew up a lot on John C. Maxwell you yeah. know, in, in my leadership. So I'm trying to say, well, which was what was the most transformative John C. Maxwell book? The guy wrote a lot of good books. Um, one, one major one is coming to mind. I'll say okay. that when you're done. Oh, but, okay. But let me say this. this. This is a powerful one. And this one applies. This one is a very powerful book for a change maker, for a leader, for an entrepreneur. It's a very it's one of his smallest books. I know it. Which one? White and blue. White and blue, yes. yeah. Which one? What do you think it is? How successful people think. Yes! Hey, 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 that, that, that book is good. That was what I was I, I, I said when you're done. That yes, thing that is, is it. transformative. That thing is transformative. It will tear your mind open. I tell you, I tell you. So, yes, how successful people think. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? As I, I wanted you to finish yes. that, that book. Yes. That book changed yes. my it's one of the yes. smallest books and yes. it changed yes. Yes. my life. Yes. That book is good. Uh, we will talk about the book because yeah. leadership leadership is about is thinking mm. right is how you think yeah and and is the difference between a leader and a follower is how they think yeah. and the quality of the thinking right but that's the second book so a second. third book hmm. a third book i i would have to give it to movers and shakers mm. because it's it's from the it's it helps shape aspiration and um, purpose in me and mm. intention in me Mm. Um, very early on and so i would say that's that's uh that's it but there are many books i'm struggling to put a third book but let's just uh, another book i would have said yeah. is atomic habit ah okay i i have then not finished reading that but yeah. it's powerful courage is calling have you read courage is calling? i bought it i've not read it okay. it's on my it's on my list for this quarter actually you see you yeah. see there are some books yeah, there's some books that just relate you know, you know. yeah so i bought that um discipline is destiny and courage is calling courage yeah ego yeah. ego is the enemy yeah you know that the, the guy is very stoic very, yeah, yeah. There, there are a lot of classical books that I still go back to. Power of Positive Thinking, definitely yes. too. It's just that that's how successful think probably it, came to. Yes, it yeah, just moved it off the shelf. it off the show for me. But there are a lot of powerful books. I love yes. Jim Rohn. I know you love Jim Rohn. Yes, I do too. I love Jim Rohn. Um, I love hearing him speak. Y yes, yes. It, the podcast and videos. Yes. Yeah, they, they were really fun, fun, yeah. foundational. J Jim Rohn is is very different. He, he takes you through the journey, even the way he yeah. talks. Yeah. And nah, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> way he slows. Yeah. You know his word yeah. amazing so tell me about imagination and thinking and did you think you'll be this successful right and you may not be there yet or are you there yet you know are you where you thought you'll be at this point do we do we look like we're there yet? <laughs> <laughs> we're growing anyway we're growing okay see the truth of the matter is this yeah. one of the principles that i I held on to very early mm. is that success is intentional mm. and greatness is more intentional you can success is intentional and greatness, greatness is, more, is more intentional you can literally program your life you can literally program your life and um, design your outcomes mm. to a great extent right um and if if you if you understand that mm. you can walk backwards so if you if you if you speak to people that kind of knew me 10 years ago yes they will tell you femi is doing everything he said he wanted to do oh. femi is um, i mean let me give an example 
and this is this is by the grace of God, mm. right? Now I won't, I don't tick all the boxes. Mm. I've made several mistakes, right? But knowing that I could design the outcomes of my life very early, and then having a sandbox to experiment it mm. before coming out, you know, my sandbox was university. Yeah. So university, my year one, when I came up, when I found these principles and I interacted with these principles, in my year one, I told myself I wanted to get away a first class. Right? I was like, I can it, I, I can program my life to get this hmm. this result. So the first thing I did was I went to go and have conversation with quite a number of first class people that I met. I mean I got to year one. So for people already having first class in final year. Let me go and talk to them. What did they do? What are they doing? Amazing. Right? Because one of the knowledge will give you an edge in programming yes. your life. So knowledge is a, for knowledge and wisdom. So I went to procure wisdom and acquire sense, like they would say, <laughs> right? <laughs> so taking what I learned, mm. I took from different people and with the help of my friend, I developed my own framework, my own principle. And I decided not to focus on my scoreboard, yeah. my CGPA, my GPA. I decided to focus on the principles, on my framework, and I could guarantee that results mm. would follow. I learned this particular principle of what you focus on yes. from one of my mentors, Feladrote. He, he was talking about how in a game of lawn tennis, mm. what determines the winner? The scoreboard, right? Yes. But what truly determines the winner is the ball. If the player can make sure that every time the ball comes to his court, mm. he plays the ball to the, within the confines of the court to the yes. other side, if he can focus on the ball each time without... He doesn't have to look at the scoreboard yes. to, to win. He just has to make sure he's paying attention to the ball yes. and eating the ball to the other side. Mm. If he focuses on that consistently, and that is his occupation, yes. of the occupation of his mind, mind yes. he can be sure that the scoreboard... So in my, in my university, I never went to check my results most times. I think maybe just once or twice. We had like eight semesters. Yes. But every time my result was a first class. I had a first class result every semester. And of course, I graduated with a first class CGPA. Wow. But it was that principle. I just, so my focus was on what do I need to do? My focus was on those, the principles Please, I needed to pay attention to. Don't feel to. bad. <laughs> no, no. So <laughs> just, just pick the principles and apply it's the them principles. now. Yeah, it's the principles. Start applying them. Don't yeah. feel bad. So okay. I did that for, for academics. I did that for one or two other things. Then when I, when I graduated, when I got to that final year, mm. you know, then I told myself, let me go for a first class life. So the question now is, what is the metric of a first class life? What does that look like? And I will talk about metrics. I'll talk about KPIs and talk about the bot, you know, back to that book, bottom yes. line thinking. Yes. Right? But so that's it. So a major principle is imagination and vision, as far as your eyes can see. Yeah. Right? Um, I I love, I love you if you if you if you if you work with me or you um or you you interact with me, you know that I read a lot, just like now, and I, yeah. I try to learn a lot. Um one of the major voices that trained me mm -hmm. and graciously had the opportunity to also have, have direct mentorship mm -hmm. for me was Bowles Morrow, right? Before he passed now, blessed memories. Mm -hmm. But I love his um, definition of vision. You know, vision is foresight based on insight with the benefit of hindsight. Mm -hmm. So if you want to really become a visionary person and you want to be able to imagine, you know, in invest seed imagination, seed yourself, invest in yourself to be able to imagine in your field or your industry and aspire for big things, that ability to envision will be hinged on your understanding of history. What have people done in your, in your field? Who are the people that have done great things? You need references. So, hindsight. Hindsight. You cannot interact with hindsight and invest into research and understanding, you know, the people who built those industries or, you know, what made for great organizations and you will not be able to imagine or envision. Yes. So foresight, then principles, insight, those things empower you to have foresight, right? So that's that's one of the things. And vision is a major part of everyone's life. Mm. I, from that first year, back to the example I used, yes. from that first year, I had a vision of me climbing on stage on my graduation. I had that picture in mind. I maintained that picture in my mind mm. because they used to welcome first class people to cry. So it was a major picture I had in my mind that helped my discipline, mm. right? Every time I felt like giving up or I felt like giving in, mm. I, I maintained that picture, right? So, um, yeah. So, <clears throat> imagination is powerful. 
you said you did you determined to have a first class life so would you please share <laughs> when you determine to have a first class life you just say i'm determined to have a first class life and nothing written nothing like what were the steps you took that is giving you this first class life uh, well, if I stay on that journey, that journey, well, the journey <laughs> but hey, you know, yeah, but we're making progress. We're making thank progress. God. Yeah. Um, so let at this before I jump into that question, yeah, since this is CEO, so yeah. that people know that these things are structured. You yes. see, you can't give what you don't have. One of the things I used to say is that you can't you can't drink um, frosties and vomit cocoa pops. Ah. Normally, I used to say you can't drink Gary and vomit conflict, but because we have a global <laughs> audience, let's use yeah. other examples. But leadership, you know, there are different dimensions of leadership. But before we even talk about leading others or leading yeah. organizations, the first person you have to lead is yourself. It starts with leadership of self, right? Leadership of self. You have to be able to lead yourself from where you are to where you can be. Mm. You, if, you, if you want to be able to hold a vision for an organization and lead that organization, you have to be able to hold a vision for yourself mm. and lead yourself, right? Yes. So back to... Did I at did I document it? Yeah. Um, yeah. In twenty in twenty twenty um, in two thousand and five. Yeah. Back to sandbox. Back to how we can actually prepare young people. In yeah. the university we attended, one of the classes we saw was called TMC Total Man Concept, right? Um, what you can do is all, all you can do is all you can do. <laughs> yeah, and all you can, can do is enough. enough. <laughs> yes, they made us write a letter to ourselves in ten years time, mm. twenty fifteen like as 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 time will have it i stumbled on that letter in 2015 again he keeps records i i, I just went i had a file he and i just stumbled records. on i've forgotten that letter but i stumbled on the letter i wrote to myself ten, my 10 year self and you stumbled year, on it in, in this exact same year 2015 actually <sighs> and in that in that letter i was writing and in fact i I'm, I'm this sabbatical. I'm yeah. about to go and go for some days off, and I'm going back to go and get some files, yeah, like time zone. old journals, old writing. No, no, yeah, no, no. I'm in Nigeria. Zone. I'm in Lagos. Okay. In uh, Ibadan, <laughs> <laughs> <It's not laughs> yeah, because okay. yeah. So, but I wrote. I was writing to myself that okay, Femi, in 2015, I see you speaking globally. Mm. I see you facilitating transformation globally. I see you sitting on boards, doing things with UN, with AU, you know, um, and They've come to pass. They, as in, they have actually. They have, they have. You know, I've done literally all those things. Many of those things that I was writing there. Yeah. You know, um, so that's that's it. But over time, I've had to articulate. What are, what what are the metrics? Mm. Back to good to great, right? Mm. There's no point reading if you're not going to use what you read now, yes. right? In that good to great for the social sector, one of the first thoughts that was pushed across by Jim Collins was. What does distinctive impact look like? What does greatness look like? How do you define greatness? By saying good to great, what does greatness look mm. like for you? Mm. You know, you can't, the dream you don't define cannot drive you yeah. successfully. And it's a major, powerful principle in leadership. The dream you, you don't, don't define, define cannot, cannot drive, drive you. you. So if you can, the same way is the same principle too for leading your team or organization. If you cannot really paint a picture, of what you, you, don't, you don't just say we are moving our organization from good to great what is good what is that what, what does that look what, like what is good what, what is, is great? great what is the baseline where are we starting from and where are we going to it's the same thing too so i had to initially i had a tripartite kind of um bottom line mm. I, I i defined that first class life from the point of view of impact okay. influence and income Impact, influence, and yeah. income. Uh, you like a lot of acronyms, but you let me make it better for you because yes. that's not even acronym <laughs> yet. <laughs> Impact, influence, and income. And I discovered in my leadership journey and my inter in, in leading organizations that I, I mean, I I I decide I realized that I missed the major part, and oh. it's the first most important part that could drive the other things, oh. and the first that was people. So when I was leading, when I this were my personal principle, but I used it to lead a particular organization, oh. right? Um, and I realized that the, I should just be eating the pie daily. Pie, as I said, pie. I just remember yeah, pie now. Pie, I remember yeah, our yeah. pie, you know. Um, but that's the, the that's the pie I should eat daily. Mm. That's the pie I should eat daily for the kind of first class life mm. that I want, right? So people impact in that order. People impact, impact influence, income. Let me explain. 
if I focus, this this is personal to me. It might mean people, it might mean different things for people. But yeah. remember, I said fascinating transformation of individuals, organization, yes. and nations. Yes. I am called to serve people. So whether it's within an organization, within um, within um, the broader society, yeah. my the products, my services, my products, the things I would do, have a, they have a human side to it, humanity and a human face to it. Mm. In terms of my own career path and my business trajectory, mm. right? I must be able to point everything I do to serving people. If I can consciously, intentionally serve people with excellence, with intentionality, I would always have impact. I'm loving this. I'm loving this interview and uh, I, I wish I could write, you know, take notes, but I'm glad I'll be able to watch it and pick a lot of lessons from it. I want to go back into interrogate your passion. Okay. Interrogate your passion. You said you always interrogate your passion. Um, are you interrogating the why? Are you interrogating the the motive? Are you inter What are you interrogating? I would like you to just briefly break uh ex expatiate on that okay um hmm. one of the reasons why i talked about interrogate your passion mm. is um, there are different dimensions to it mm. you, we've seen people um jump out at the wrong timing we've seen people pursue prof passion on, in unprofitable ways yeah right we've seen people burn out even by trying to explore their passion man burnout is real it's real it's real we've seen people so there, there are different dimensions to it yeah. we, we we talk about a point of entry in systems thinking or in programs design yeah so there's a problem or there are different dimensions to a problem or there are many things you're passionate about what's your point of entry mm. right what's the best point of entry so let me give an example yeah all i knew was that i was passionate about solving problems mm. You might feel that's big. But yes, I knew I was very passionate about solving problems. Yes. I knew a lot, a bit to say that I couldn't do something monotonous. I love the diversity of problems. I solve this problem. I solve that problem as my day to day. Yeah. And I was asking myself, what is the best career that can allow me to solve problems on the go and solve different kinds of problems? Mm. And then early on in my career, I was like, a consulting career might be a good way. Because in consulting, yes. management consulting, you have, you have different cases, you know, and you're solving a human um, a fin the financial side of a problem, the human resource side of a problem, you know, a strategy side of a problem. But guess what? That was not my path. I, I did get consulting jobs, like in the structure consulting and um, global consulting firms, and I didn't get some. But it took me a while to realize I could do similar in the in a development organization. I see. Because I, I would have this kind of project today. I would have that kind of project. I would have this kind of project, especially in an organization that, has, that intervenes in different thematic areas. Yes. Right? So that, that, that's an example of interrogating your passion. Interrogating your passion could also say, what's the right vehicle to yeah. pursue this passion? Interrogating your passion could be, should I do a job or should I build a business? Or should I start a non-profit? Mm. You understand? Interrogating a passion could be, who are the people that can guide me on this journey? So there are different dimensions to interrogating your passion. But I think even much more deeper is separating interest from passion. Mm. Separating, separating interest from passion. from passion. Or separating minor passions from your major. Okay. okay. Right? What should I invest my life in, in this season of my life? Right? So I, I, don't, know, I don't know if that, uh, that, that helps. That, 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 that really helps. Thank you very okay. much. Interrogating your passion, giving clarity um, to your passion understanding the vehicles that you you use to achieve your version your passion the entry points to your passion and and i'll say the resources you have the natural resources you have yeah to achieving your yeah. passion the resources you need external resources you may need mm -hmm. to achieve your passion the people yeah. the you know the strategy you need to achieve your passion i think that's very very beautiful and we all you know need to have that moment that sabbatical that yeah moment where we interrogate our passions or interrogate even our goals our yeah. ideas even our beliefs right where yeah. we say why do i believe that i can do this why do i you know I you, you, you want to say something yeah I, I agree with you let me give an example one yeah. of the first problems that i was visibly annoyed with and i'm still annoyed with <laughs> in this my nation is downfall mm. so they don't, they don't have regard for from. users yeah they don't have regard for other road users or yes. even the customers and the boss right so i have i mean makes you really angry yeah i'm passionate about that yeah. but should i because of that 
<laughs> what should I do with that passion? <laughs> no, that's a good one. What should yeah. I do with that passion? Mm. But it was a pointer to a bigger problem. Yes. It's a pointer to the failure of leadership yes. in public sector, mm. a failure of policy. Mm. And so I could approach solving that problem from that point of view. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. It doesn't mean I should go and buy a bus. It doesn't mean I should start a mobility startup. It could mean that for different people. But that's yes. just one simple use case of saying interrogate your passion. Yeah. Right? For the longest time, I bought I own the domain, um, owned the domain do um dafo.org. I'm telling you, even last week I was asking myself, what do I want to do with this thing? And I'm like, you know, maybe I should just put a challenge or put some. So there are different now I could even start an hackathon. That's another way to do something with that passion. And maybe throw two million as a cash price to say someone to find a solution to, you know, or something, you know, or just Innovative. seed some ideas. So there are different Amazing. ways you can. And I also realized quite early that not oh. all passions are to be pursued immediately. Ad immediately. Mm. Honestly. So I there, there, I'm sure you also, I know, not that I'm sure. There are things that you want to do that, that you are just like, be, yeah, yeah, it's not your time. It's not your time. You know, so interrogating your passion. So you don't just burn out. You don't just fizzle out. You don't just um, you don't you don't just come out prematurely and prematurely and um, and um, you lose steam or you're yeah. you're disregarded because I have I have many many examples of coming out prematurely, right? Mm. I've had businesses I tried to do not even businesses they were they were impact projects, mm. right? One was to solve cancer, one you know education, but at that time it wasn't ripe you know i didn't have the resources as it were to fulfill that passion and it's still something i hope to do in the future so i can really relate right yeah. then you're going to give another example interrogating your passion yes. also means reading about that so don't before you jump into anything you want to back to that definition of foresight based on insight with the benefit yes, of insight. insight do you understand more about historically about this problem yeah. or about this passion about what others have done with the passion and what they're doing do you have insights into what makes this work what makes this stay what makes this stick you know and then you can you that means you what using those two pillars you'll have more foresight about what you can do with that passion and all so there are different dimensions to it um and i'm trying to also move this just not just from an individual leadership point of view yes. but even to an organizational point of view so whether you ro you're running the business or a social enterprise you know you find, I mean, first of all, if your organization, a living organization will be passionate about many, several things. Yes. A living organization doesn't just um, do business as usual, you know, and maintain the status quo. Yeah. A living organization, a truly living organization and healthy culture, you would have people saying, oh, we can do this. We can do that. Why don't we try this? You know, yeah. the ex, they're, they're experiencing the problem in different ways, exercising yes. their passion about that same problem. That means they're passionate about the problem the organization is trying to solve. Yeah. You know, and the service is offering and they can think about different things. But it doesn't mean you pursue everything. Yeah. There's one Asian um, proverb. It said that the dog has four legs. Doesn't mean it has to run in four directions. Right? So, that's, that's so, just, just, so even an organization, you need to be able to interrogate um, your passion you know, the organizational passion, ideologies, and, you know, to set the direction. So you're not leading in the wrong, you know, you have to say which is more profitable. You have to not, there are many ways to interro interrogate because we have CEOs that are very, they are bringing a million ideas to the yes. team. I see that, in, I see that when I'm talking to teams of some small businesses, they're like, yes. this one, they will say, we're doing this today, we're doing that tomorrow, we're doing yes. this, which one are we doing? What's the right trajectory for us to really blow and influence the world or change the world or, you know, maximize profit, yes. right? So you need to interrogate. That means have a framework to test ideas. Does it pass the mission test, you know, so that there's no mission you know does it pass yeah. the mission test does it pass pass the profitability or the sustainability test for you yes. does he you know those kind of things yeah amazing mm -hmm. recently uh in my business right we had to we had like a strategy session where we decided to focus on two things that we want to do we yeah. had a lot of things we wanted to to do there i would like to ask uh some questions about business lessons You've dealt with a lot of businesses. You've done a lot with small, medium scale, like I mentioned before. What are the most notable business failures that you've seen that 
probably impacted you. Maybe maybe read about but I would like something that you've Article. you've handled a business failure, either personal or something you helped somebody, you know, with a business failure and some lessons you took from that business failure or business lessons as it were. Or leadership failure. Hmm. I, I think and I'm not using the example I'm using is not the example of um also businesses that like you're just trying to keep body and soul yeah you know just like solopreneurship yeah um let me let me i'm going to be speaking from the perspective of those who are trying to build business that would outlive them or businesses that at least they can step away from as a founder yes. right and that as a, as a going concern you know yeah. a growing concern as it were um i think one of the one one major lesson is that people underestimate the importance of governance. I've seen some people mm. underestimate the importance of governance. Corporate governance? Corporate governance. Yeah, thanks for, for that. Corporate governance in, you know, in, in, in the different stages of their business. So, obviously, when you start your business, you just focused on revenue, making the, you know, the cash flow, you know, and all of that. And you always still pay attention to those metrics and that's very important to keep the business going. But as your business grows, it gets to a point that I mean, even early on, you need to put some systems, some structures in place to be able to ensure that you can sustain growth and you can, the business can fulfill its potential. So I think that's one thing I've seen that some people underestimate until it hurts them. Um, but let me flip this around to share things that I think works or would work. You know, from just interacting with maybe some other founders um, from the organizations I had the privilege of leading and just our work with social entrepreneurs or SMEs yes. you know, from the organizations I've served in. Um, one is, if you are leading a business, the question is, what does that even look like? If you are leading an organization, what does that look like? What does that mean? Mm. Yes, you can ultimately say you are leading individuals. But what, what are the different dimensions of leading an organization? Um, and so let me just try to, to, to start from top. The first is that I, I'm speaking to you as a CEO now, yeah. or as the one leading a major division. You, you, a major tool for your leadership is vision, mission, values. Even for an organizational leadership. With those three things, you can activate your people. You can direct your people. You can influence your people. Because leadership is, amongst other things, influence. Right? Vision can go into the day-to-day -day lives of even down to the front desk person. Mission and values can go into the day-to-day -day life and the culture and the operations of a business. If it's carefully honest, carefully articulated, articulated and carefully wielded by, by the leader. The vision, mission, and values are they sound high level, but they are very practical. Yeah. Right? It's not just something that sits on the wall or that sits on your website or your business profile. <laughs> it should really literally be something you that you use as a leader to frame the narrative of your interaction with your people. Right? People should you 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 can't have a growing business or a successful business when everybody in the business, from the drivers to the security, are not living. Vision. the reality of what that vision entails in their practicality and they cannot see how they play a part or how their part contributes to the vision mm. you know and what is vision vision very simply put is to be what do you want to be mission is to do what what are you doing and what do you want to do for others and for the world and you know for your customers and values is how you do behaviors to help you do and to help you be right articulate it then you embody it as the leader mm. and let it form let it be the let let it form the basis of your policies, mm. of your reward systems, right? And all the kinds of systems you would in place in your organization, mm. right? So that's one vision, mission, values. The next thing is how do you operationalize it? You operationalize it in policies, like I said. You operationalize it into systems, mm. systems of reward, systems of learning, mm. systems of management, systems of accountability. Right, systems of you know all of the systems you you so as a leader you're a leader of individuals you're a yes. leader of idea ideas that run your business yes. you're a leader of the systems that run your business 
right? So these are practical things you can do to build a great business. And I would encourage you to invest in corporate governance. That means set up a board. No matter, like, even if it's an advisory board, even if it's not a, if it's not a board of directors. And board is not as, it's not complex in the sense that it's not about giving people stake or that they have to have shares. Yeah. Is that you have another layer of leadership above you that you can draw from, that you can lean on, that can bring different high-level competencies, you know, and visibility to your business, you know, to your to your leadership and to your organizational trajectory. So that's 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 one thing I would say. But let me let me go this dimension. Leadership of an organization will be about managing some tensions. Yes. Right? People versus performance. You have to manage the perf- how, how are we building people but also demanding performance? Sometimes you, people lean towards one extreme or the other, but you would have to manage those tensions. Short-term ob- priorities and long-term objectives. How do we make sure that at least we meet the next quarter target? We meet the but how do we make sure that you know we are growing, we are doing the RD, we are improving the, the, the processes, we are improving our systems to be able to thrive for the long term. So short-term priorities with long-term objectives. You know, um, you know, so it's it has to it is all about that. Um and I would say that at the end of it all, it it comes down to intentionality. Yeah. Right? Intentionality. Intentionality in defining what success looks like, how you achieve those that success, yeah. and then what what that means on a day-to-day for everybody. Amazing. Yeah. So talk a little about bouncing back from failure. Okay. Uh, what have you seen? What are the principles? If you have examples, have you seen businesses who took a huge loss? How did they come back up? What did they do? How were you a part of that? Or the general advice? No, know, maybe I should use a personal example so that I don't use other the example of other yeah, people that we supported, yeah. right? Um, firstly, um, so in my own leadership journey. Um, I've, I've had I've had instances where I would have preferred if I managed people in a different way mm. or manage people better, right? And I've seen people talk about. I remember there was a time, one of my some of my virtually most of my team members. I like, tell me what exactly changed between last year and this year, right? Every change at the base at the at the, at the root of it is where am I? Why am I here? What would what do I desire? And what do I need to do? Right? So where am I? Why am I here? What do I desire? And why what do I desire? Why desire, do I desire it? And what do I need to, to do? do? Right? So you can call it different names. You can say gap analysis. <laughs> you can you can call it there are different tools, gap different analysis, frameworks, right? Yeah. Um but at the end of it all, I what what changed was basically me settling down and you know t- getting feedback, taking mm-hmm. feedback in I mean, feedback is a is a going concern, right? Yeah. But one of it was about getting feedback in structured ways. Mm. So feedback can help you bounce back. Bounce back, yeah. It could mean in a in a business sense, it could mean getting feedback from your customers. Yes. And really, literally, you you have to you have very to be true. you have to be very 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 passionate about learning as a business and as an individual, as a leader and as a business that wants to lead, mm. right? Uh, lead the market, lead the market share, and all. You have to be intentional about learning. Learning about what's changing in the world around you, what's changing in your customers' uh, um, um, preferences, you know, learning from your customer about the mistakes you're making or what you could do better. And I think those are fundamental things that I've seen people use to bounce back. Yeah, yeah. amazing. I think, I think what you said there, learning, listening to your customers, getting the feedback on why they didn't purchase. Because yeah. most business failures, are the ones that are really, really obvious out there, is when customers stop revenue. buying from you, yeah. revenue. Yeah. when revenue is hit so um learning from them as to why i think is very is very very underestimated you know i think criminally underestimated actually because once your once your customers can give you the feedback in fact they have the roadmap as it were yeah they know what they want and they know what they expect thank you very much for yeah. watching the mr jegs africa see you on scripted Ah. I said something earlier. I said everybody needs a Femi title. I hope you understand now that you need a Femi title in your life. You need to watch and watch this over and over again until you know all the principles here have been applied into your business, into your life, you know, and you're a lot better for it. Thank you and see you 
in the next episode of CEO Scripted on Mr. Jex Africa.